Here are two videos, one made by AI and the other also made by AI, but one was obvious and the other's pretty good. So if you didn't get it right away, that's fine. I would be more worried about the people who didn't click on this video because they're so sure they know how to spot AI videos. Only the bad ones are easy to spot. The good ones go unnoticed. And when that happens, no one pops out saying, gotcha, hope you learned your lesson. No, it just fades into the feed and becomes normal. My name's Jeremy Carrasco, and I'm fascinated with AI and video, though currently pretty skeptical. I play with the same tools you're seeing online, and I credit and disclose my AI uses, but many people don't, either because they're unaware or they're trying to trick you. You need to know how to spot AI videos, but I really wish you didn't have to. The AI companies and platforms really need to step up with some real solutions because the video models are good now. The new releases fixed most of the old giveaways and AI creators get around the new giveaways by changing their prompts or just trying again. In this video, I generated every AI clip you see and I clearly labeled all of them so you don't need to be paranoid. I have an AI usage statement on my channel page and remember that these tips will have an expiration date because the models will improve. So. Let's get started and do some eye training. I group red flags into three categories, anatomy, technical, and situational. There are about 12 red flags total. You need a few of them together to be sure that something's AI. Real videos can get caught up here, so be careful not to jump to conclusions too soon or over-police this. I'm starting with anatomy because it's definitely your best bet. There are no tech or media skills needed. And here's why, you have a superpower you know what humans look like way better than AI does. So let's embrace this power and use it, especially because these will be some of the toughest red flags for the AI companies to take care of. Let's start training with this AI video. We're naturally drawn to their smiles and faces, but let's rewind and look closer. The hand starts with five fingers, but then gets mushy. The handshake looks normal, but the hug is the real giveaway. The hands blend and morph together. AI has figured out that our hands have five fingers now, but videos show how hands move and that's harder. A sharp AI creator would just try again. I actually had to run that video a few times to get something halfway convincing, but the other weird mushy hand things would slide under the radar and make it to your screen. Let's show another one, a vertical video. This influencer is normal up until the very end where her hands do that. Anything with complex body movement is tricky for AI. Here, the woman runs well until she has this unnatural stumble, and sports highlights barely work at all. They're pretty funny to watch. AI creators are definitely onto this, so they try to avoid these situations since they know the model struggle, but there are four red flags that are present in almost any video with a human, so I'm going to cover them all at once. Ready? I'm next to an AI person so we can compare and see what's wrong with him. Don't pay too much attention to me. The AI's skin is smooth, like it's wearing a ton of makeup. There are details resembling pores, but they don't stay in the same spot on his skin as his face moves. The skin looks like leather. The subtleties are gone and the texture is off. Now, let's look at the hair, which has some shape and strands, but it looks very thick, almost like it's animal fur. It's coarse and fuzzy looking. And the teeth are straighter than mine, which is not much of an accomplishment, but they change width and shapes as he talks, and the spacing between them shifts around. Okay, that's enough staring at me. Let's appreciate that for a second. I called that a superpower for a reason. Your subconscious can pick out all that detail that I had to zoom in on to demonstrate, and that's pretty cool. Speaking of which, look at this firefighter and how he turns around. Did you see it? His eyes popped into the frame too quickly and stayed really wide. Google's VO has this wide eye bug right now that's a dead giveaway, but eyes in general can look too glassy and dead because they don't show real life movements. So you've come across a video you think might be AI, but there's nothing wrong with the people or maybe no people, but it has this weird look or bad vibes. Let's discuss the technical red flags so we can attach some actual words to those vibes. AI video looks smooth and fuzzy from a combination of the blurry picture, film frame rate, and AI artifacts. Here's a real video of me next to two similar AI videos. In mine, anything that's in focus is sharp and anything that's out of focus is naturally blurry. But in the AI videos, there's less of a difference. Everything's a bit soft and the background is evenly blurry. Oh, 
And while my video is 1080p high definition, the AI videos are actually upscaled to 4K and still this soft. That's the AI look. It's hazy, it has a glow to it, and it's just fuzzy. These models are trained to look good and professional, so the soft look is strange and out of place in otherwise very well lit and good looking environments. They're also trained to look like movies. VO and Runway are the two most popular models. They only generate videos in 24 frames per second. The frame rate is how many pictures are taken every seconds to make the video. Lower frame rates have longer exposures, which cause more motion blur. For AI, it's a great match because it's kind of blurry anyway. Luckily though, 24 frames per second is not that popular outside of movies or videos trying to look like movies. For example, sports and video games are usually shot at 60 frames per second to capture that quick movement. This clip at 24 frames per second is a weird fit for a motorcycle race. Most casual like selfie videos we see online are shot at 30 frames per second because that's the default setting for phone cameras. So when the AI tries to create that style at 24 frames per second, it actually looks too good since we associate that frame rate with movies. Camera people are about to comment about how they shoot 24 FPS and yeah, I know that. Remember, these are just red flags and none of them are perfect. If AI didn't mimic professional videos, we wouldn't be here. Let's move to audio. Take a look and listen to this clip. It started like any other day, but then the sky turned a color I'd never seen before. Many people will say the lip sync is off. As an audio engineer, I'm really sensitive to lip sync, but I have a lot of coworkers who couldn't detect lip sync at all. So this one's hard to teach. But when people say lip sync is off, I don't think they mean that in the traditional sense. They just see bad vowel or consonant mouth shapes, and that makes the mouth look mushy. Additionally, the voices can sound robotic or synthetic. Hi, this is a test video. I'm not a real person. Can you tell? This only applies to videos generated by Google's VO3, since currently that's the only model that makes sound. And finally, some of the AI look is just inherent to the current ways videos are generated. Technically, all the red flags are caused by this process, but the point is these models are predictive and random, and that can result in tons of little mistakes that are hard to see and explain, but in total give you the gut feeling that something's wrong. Let's move to the third and final category, situational red flags. These are needed to confirm your findings, but they are more meta. The background is usually where mistakes hide because it's blurry. Real life blurry things follow the laws of physics, believe it or not, but in AI videos, blurry is unclear, therefore less predictable. It's not the first place anyone looks, but if your BS detector goes off, look closer. This beautiful shot doesn't seem to have a dead giveaway, but if we zoom in, we have a weird hand render, a duck goose thing that started as two, but now it's one thing, I don't know. Here, there was supposed to be a car shadow, but there's no car, and I still don't know what this is. This podcast looks okay until we zoom in. That baseball stitching is wrong, the mic stand and cabling is nonsense, and the football jersey completely gives it away. Then in this behind the scenes shot, those camera rigs are made up. Those are not real. Again, AI creators don't let obvious things slide, so you have to look for these smaller details. I've been saving the last two red flags for now, so I wouldn't scare anyone off early. The video's purpose and style are very important and at the core of why this even matters at all. Like, why should you even care about being fooled by AI videos? You need to have your own reason besides just avoiding embarrassment with family or friends. Well, for as long as they have existed, videos proved that something happened. That made it a powerful communication tool. But now that relationship is broken and that completely changed what videos mean. It happened really quickly. AI videos pass by because they make people feel good, so they don't care if it's AI. I also see a lot of AI ads selling products that only an AI person would possibly show up on camera to sell you. Or there are viral AI videos that rack up views, then link you to a site where they sell advertising or a product that's of questionable quality. It's also perfect for memes. It's low effort and easy to make something crazy or funny. There are already a lot of ASMR AI videos or fake historic videos. I'm seeing more AI generated political content emerge and that's my worst fear coming true. It's not deep fakes of known people, but of fake 
folksy people on the street stuff with a political rage baiting edge. Why are you here? We want Congress to recognize pizza as a vegetable. <laughs> Entire worlds of fake crazy people are emerging from thin air. The purpose of AI videos change each time. Sometimes it's harmless and sometimes it's manipulative, but those are the two extremes that are perfect for AI. You should be more skeptical when you see something that's very provocative or very dumb. That's not new, but AI makes it way harder. That was dark, but this can work in favor of human creators too. Relatable, casual social content is not a strong point of AI video because it's the most uncanny. I have a theory that people will actually have to double down on unedited videos. The tech that makes chatbots or AI companions isn't the same tech that makes AI videos. They're both just called AI. AI videos don't build relationships that well. Finally, video category really matters. Since there is an uncanny valley, look out for videos that just avoid that completely, like these categories. Because they don't have photorealistic humans, viewers seem to care less about these being real. But remember that there are real animators and creators and photographers who make a living in this space, and they're still a powerful medium. I said we were almost done, and we are, but let's do a bonus round of red flags that people think are good, but are easy to misunderstand or hard to learn. First, AI videos can have any type of contrast. I think that this trick was introduced by a really, really good video from Corridor Crew last year on YouTube, but their tricks applied to photos and VO wasn't even out yet. Here's a video I made with a lot of contrast, and here's one with less. Same with a video being over or undersaturated. That depends on the style. Or a person's skin being tinted too yellow or green. That's very context dependent. Also, there are AI video detectors, but they aren't reliable. We should hope that tools like SynthID work instead. That's a Google project that detects invisible fingerprints in its videos. It's not out yet, but hopefully it pushes other AI companies to do the same. Eventually, a universal watermarking or verification system would be great because everything I just told you is going to expire. Let's bring it home. The most important thing, by far, is to be curious. Your goal is to develop a sharp and skeptical gut feeling. To get there, when you see an obvious AI video, take that as a learning opportunity. Look at the setting and the style of the video, how it looks and how it feels to watch. Don't just look at the obvious AI parts, look at the background, the lighting, the textures, and the types of subjects. And before long, your BS detector will be tuned to find AI video styles and increase the likelihood that you'll look closer. Please keep up to date on new models and the tricks that don't work anymore, or what new ones might pop up. Subscribe here for those updates. Thank you, and keep it real.